As we conducted our own research about AIDS, we quickly realized that so many of us don't know all the correct answers to some very important questions that Magic Situation has raised. Dr. Bob Arnott of CBS This Morning and I asked some teenagers to sit down with us to find out what they know about AIDS and what they don't know. We must caution you that some of the information is somewhat explicit. Inglewood High School is only a few miles from the Los Angeles Forum where the Lakers play ball, but it's practically their second home. The team holds practice sessions in the school gym, and these kids are some of their biggest fans. But they're also a group just beginning to explore the road to romance, more aware than ever of the life-threatening risks that sex now entails. Dr. Bob Arnott and I wanted to find out just what these kids knew. So Inglewood's principal, Ken Crow, took us to an advanced placement English class where we found a group of seniors eager to talk about sex and AIDS. In fact, we were surprised at just how open they were. You know, you're gonna have to be real honest. I'm gonna ask you, do you have sex? And if you, if you use condoms, and, and you gotta be totally honest, you can't say, well, I have a friend who does this. You gotta say, I, you know, me, right? Who wants to volunteer? <laughs> well, I guess I'm not too shy. So, we took two dozen students to the library. How many of you are aware that Magic Johnson tested HIV positive? <laughs> How many of you knew about AIDS before his news conference? You knew about it. What happened to you after you heard Magic Johnson's announcement? Was there a change? Yes. 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 What was that change? Realized that anyone could really get it. Were you at all disappointed in him? In a way, I was because I felt like he kind of, personally, he kind of let me down because sleeping with so many men and women made me lose respect for him. Well, I still respect him as a basketball player, as an athlete, but it made me lose kind of some respect for him, and it wasn't, I didn't think he was as great as I always imagined. Jerry, you're a football player. Magic says he slept with a large number of women. Do you sleep with a lot of uh, women? Um, <laughs> not a lot. Well, what's not a lot? How many? Um, <laughs> overall, I mean, I say I've had sex maybe four times. How many women have you slept with? I'd say about, in my life, about ten. When did you start being sexually active? I lost my virginity uh, right after the eighth grade. Did you use a condom the first time you had sex? The first time I had sex, and I did not use a condom. Did any of you use a condom the first time you had sex? Yeah. yeah. How many know? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, nothing. I said, well, I never had sex. I know, I know. You haven't had sex. How old are you? I'm 17. How have you been able to uh, resist the temptation? Oh, it's hard. I mean, I'm a very moral person, you know. And I stick to my values and morals. I don't care if they're going to, if they, they have to accept it if I'm going to be in any relationship. Do your reasons also include AIDS? And oh, yeah, that's what kind of made me have some values and morals. Yeah. You know what? Magic Johnson right now is trying to deal with what kind of message he should give you. And he has said that abstinence is the best, but if you are going to practice sex, safe sex is good. Is he giving you the right message? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Magic Johnson gave us a realistic message, not anything crazy like abstinence. I mean, how many people, teenagers, really don't have sex? If you have a statistic on that, he gave us a realistic message. Mm -hmm. But it's like everybody's preaching having safe sex. There's no such thing as really safe sex, because you can get pregnant with a condom, you can catch ass with a condom. So there's really nothing that you can really say. It's just that you got to watch who you're having sex with. You have to really trust them. Yet to be open enough to talk to them and ask them questions. Let's say I'm going to go on a date with you. Uh -huh. What are the questions you're going to ask? I uh, ask you, do you have a girlfriend? Uh, are you sexually active? I would know about you before I went out with you, but I wouldn't have sex with you the first time I met you. Would you believe me if I said no? No, you have to, ma you have to show me things to make me believe you. I just don't believe what people say because they're lying anyway. Do you want to see an HIV test? Uh, I, have, I haven't thought about it that far, but <laughs> I know 
Right now, I don't know any high school boy that just has one girlfriend. That's, I don't know what it is. I guess they feel that they have to conquer as many people as they can, but I don't know any. <laughs> they were talking about guys aren't always trustworthy. Girls aren't always trustworthy either. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Girls. Now, why aren't they trustworthy? Because just, just like guys, you're talking, well, you know, I really care about you. Yeah, baby, I care about you too. Two days later, she's walking with your buddy. Who is at greater risk, though, of getting AIDS? Both. You or you? Both equally? Males are more. Males have more risk or less? Females. Females have more risk. In one study of 379 couples where one partner had AIDS and the other didn't, 61 women got the virus and one man. All right. I would, I would like to know if, if you have any questions for Dr. Bob. This might seem like a silly question, but I heard that you can get it from um, kissing. If you, even if you don't have a cut in your mouth, they said that the AIDS virus can still be present in your saliva. And I want to know if you can get it from actual kissing, you know, without having any blood contact, because there's a lot of yes and no, if and if answers, and I want to know if anybody's sure about that. Well, you're at risk any time you exchange bodily fluids. So whether it's saliva or semen, there is some risk. <coughs> However, there's very little of the virus in saliva, and there's not a single documented case of one individual contracting the AIDS virus from another through kissing. What kinds of sexual behavior are most at risk for getting AIDS? The highest risk sexual behavior is going to be anal intercourse. Now, that's especially true if it's male-to-male -male anal intercourse. but for men and women, it's also the highest risk. Then you have vaginal sex. After that, you have oral sex. And the lowest risk is going to be kissing. Uh, very low to probably no risk at all. If we get tested right now, it can come out negative, And then we can get tested a year from now, and it come out positive. So how can we be sure to even go get tested if it yeah. will come out negative, And then say we have sex again, and then it comes out positive later, and I've infected three other people or something like that. It's quite true that for about, oh, six to 12 weeks after you've been infected, there may not be enough antibodies for the test to work to show you're positive, and in some cases as long as six months. But it is important to get tested uh, because there's so much you could do now. Five or 10 years ago, it didn't make as much sense. Now that, as with magic, you can take AZT, this drug, you can significantly prolong your life if you are positive. You said you've had multiple sexual partners. Have you considered having an AIDS test? Uh, well, I thought about it. What stopped you? Um, I don't know. I guess I, I was scared. Scared of finding out you might be positive? Yeah. Magic had it. He still, you know, sits on a bench with the Lakers. But it's like as if a person came to school and they knew that a um, student had AIDS, they'd be, you know, he wouldn't have any friends or she wouldn't have any friends. and. They would it was like, avoid yeah, they'll be avoided. And one, one other question about magic. You know, a lot of people think that uh, his promiscuity was morally wrong and that uh, that's, he's paying the price. I feel that he might just have been doing something that he thought was fun and he probably didn't think of it at the time. I mean, yes, it was unsafe and it, he was in the wrong, but at that time, he, didn't, he probably didn't know any better. He shouldn't have to pay, you know, it's his life. His life will be taken for one little mistake. I mean, it wasn't, well, it was a big mistake, but he shouldn't have to pay his life for it. Next, we have a story that is as stunning and significant as Magic's because it deals with a life, the life of a woman who, like Magic, doesn't know exactly how she got the virus. That's coming up.